Hello, my name is Al Ackerman and welcome to the channel. Hey, if you like card magic, you're in the right spot. If you love sleight of hand, make sure you click on subscribe. Now today I'm going to be doing a card assembly. It's based on the work of Fanique and myself. Let's take a look. Hey, I'm going to show you how a hustler can work a card game just by manipulating a few cards from the deck. Now the game we're going to be playing is called Four Card Guts. We're going to have four players in our hypothetical game. Um, yeah, it's called Four Card Guts because there's four cards in each of the hands. So three of my hands are just not going to be very good. They're just low-valued number cards. I'm going to get one hand here that's uh, pretty outstanding. It's going to be our ladies, our queens of the deck. There they are, our four gals. All right, so these three hands just consist of these low-valued number cards. This is the great hand of interest here, our ladies. Now, Guts is a simple version of poker in the sense that there's only four cards in each hand, so straights and flushes have no value. So even though this is a run, three, four, five, six, it's just six high, and it would be beaten by this hand, which is seven high. All right. The great hand in guts is this one right here. Our four of a kind, four ladies. All right, now I'm going to show you how a hustler can control the game just by manipulating those four cards. <clears throat> now, card cheats are rather clever fellows, so I think you're going to find this demonstration educational as well as entertaining. I'm going to destroy this beautiful hand by dealing out one of the ladies to each of our four players, and we'll keep the order exactly the same. Diamond, spade, heart and a club. And then what I'm going to do is add three cards to each of our ladies to complete each hand. Matter of fact, I will show you each and every card as we build all four of our poker hands. So these three cards go right here on my Queen of Clubs. And then we're going to get some distance between these other hands here. And I'm going to add exactly three to my Queen of Hearts. Three cards right here to my Queen of Spades. And three cards right there on the Queen of Diamonds. Now, here's the idea. I want my poker hand to be the winning poker hand. So what we're going to do is steal each one of these ladies from the respective hands, somehow sneak it into my hand. So I'm going to start over here with the Queen of Diamonds. She's like a mirage on this desert sand. She just fades from view. I mean, she's gone, vanished. Oh, excuse me. Really gone, though. She's not there. That's just four cards. We're going to try this again, this time with Queen number two. I want you to watch this Queen of Spades, the bottom card. I'm just going to... Uh, move her forward a little bit so you don't have to take your eye of, off of her for one second. Now this just leaves me with this collection of these low, low-valued number cards. But just a flick. Hey, this is a number card now too. That gal is gone. One more queen to go. So do not take your eye off this scale. I'm going to reverse her so she's upside down between the others. So you can see her there. She's there. And yet just a snap of the fingers that fast. She is now gone. I mean, she's not here. She's not there. She's not anywhere. And over here now, I have a collection of some really good cards. Our ladies. That is to say, our four queens. There's two of them, followed by our other two. However, if I was playing poker, I don't think I'd go for those four ladies. Nope, I would use the ultimate poker hand. So watch these four queens. 
just going to snap my fingers and the ultimate poker hand being our aces, our ace of hearts, our ace of clubs, our ace of spades, and our ace of diamonds. Now this gives rise to uh, a couple of really interesting questions. Now the first question is pretty obvious. I mean, it's all about where in the world did these four aces come from? Question number two is all about thievery. Yeah, how in the world did I steal that lady away from these four cards over here? And on top of that, I did it three times. I made the diamonds disappear from there. I pirated away the Queen of Spades from this group. I pilfered the Queen of Hearts from this hand. Made all four ladies appear right here. And then with the snap of the fingers, they just changed to the aces. So the question now is, what happened to the four queens? Well, we all heard about magicians using their sleeve. Let me show you how I use my sleeve. Watch these four aces. I just rub them against the sleeve. Hey, and the queen of clubs jumped home. Our hearts jumps home. Our spades jumps home. And our diamonds, she jumps home. Now this gives rise to question number three. Because a second ago, I mean, I had all four aces right over here, right? And they're not there. Matter of fact, we can check every card in this entire deck, and there will not be an ace to be found. So that is our third question. What the heck just happened to those four aces? Well, I want you to check out my right hand. It's empty. Over here now, in my right front pants pocket, Ace of Hearts. In my left front pants pocket, hey, there's the Ace of Clubs. In my rear pocket here, we've got the Ace of Spades. And is empty, and in my front shirt pocket, there's my Ace of Diamonds. And that's my poker story. Hey, if you like the effect, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy card magic, make sure you click on subscribe. Now, I have been obsessed with this trick for over 40 years, where the cards all assemble and then they instantly kick back. My first published version I gave to Paul Harris way back when, in 1978, called Reassembled Finale. He finally got it published in 1980 in a book called Close-Up Fantasies, and the routine became very popular. Uh, J.C. Wagner had a variation, John Rockenbaumer uh, had one, Dave Neighbors, Jim Patton. But by 1980, I quit doing the routine because I had a better method. I had a method... Uh, where all four really assembled and they all four instantly kicked back. So I just quit doing the 2-4 count method. Well, we had the honor in 2019 have to have Fanique lecture for our, our Las Vegas Magic Club, Wednesday Night Magic Club. It was in January of 2019, right before COVID hit, so things were still open and life was good. <laughs> And anyway, Fanique had a uh, new book out called The Code, and in that book he had a routine called Last 88 Assembly. And that took this uh, old 2-4 count method that I originally had with Gabe Paul Harris and uh, added new dimension, just took it to a brand new uh, level by adding an extra phase uh, to the routine. So I started to do the routine again, and I combined my... Uh, 23-year-old cleanup, which I had my 2004 notes, which was just an updated handle of my original method. And I combined that with Fanique's uh, new ending that he put on to the reverse assembly. And I started to have some fun with the routine. And then about a month and a half, two months back, I came up with a brand new ending to stick on to Fanique's end, new ending. So we now have a five-phase ending routine. So the queens assemble, uh, then they change to the aces, uh, the aces disappear, and the queens kick back. Then where the aces disappear to where? Well, they go to the pockets. And you got a traveler's routine at the end. So I sent this to Fanick a couple, uh, ah, didn't actually, just maybe a month ago. And he really liked the routine, and. I asked him if I could put it in the new book, and he said, yeah, so this is going in the new book. 
uh, called the Routine Reverse 2001. Okay, if you'd like to take a peek at my favorite go-to assembly, why don't you click right up over there and uh, make sure if you like the content of this uh, page here and this effect, make sure you click on subscribe right over there. My name's Al Ackerman, and I'll catch you next time.